The quality of your marriage depends first on God and secondly, your preparation. Welcome if you're new to my channel. I am your friend, sister and host, Nonye Eze, talking to you all from Port Harcourt, Nigeria. So to my returning viewers, I am blessed by your kind words. The Lord bless you all richly in the name of Jesus. Amen. Today we'll be looking at what to do before marriage. And if you're yet to get married, if you're a spinster, a bachelor, then you are privileged seeing this video. I was not opportuned to see videos like this, but the grace of God found me. So to you, under the sound of my voice, you are blessed and I am happy to have you here. What to do first as a lady or a man before marriage? Child of God, you can't over prepare for marriage. Don't mind people that will see you reading books. They see you going for seminars. They see you learning, you know, um, wanting to become the best version of yourself. And they tell you, don't you think you're doing too much? Child of God, nothing is too much when it comes to preparation for marriage. As a matter of fact, you can't over prepare for marriage. Of course, as children of God that goes to church, we are often told during marriage seminars that the bed undefiled. Yes, that is one very common one. Don't defile your bed. Keep the marital bed holy until it is time, until the rings are worn, you know, blessed and worn. Um, we just focus on that aspect and we're gradually losing so many things. We're gradually losing one very important thing. And that is what I'll be talking about here in this video. You are focused on not defiling bed, and that is all that matters to you. How about healing from the broken relationships, from those that stabbed you, from the man that injured you in your past relationship, from the woman that ate your money and ran away, from heartbreaks generally? How about healing from those things before you step into a new relationship? How about wiping off the pictures of pains? Or stepping into another relationship? How about forgiving that person that never apologized before stepping into another relationship? Now, this is a very sensitive one. I will go back, but let me, let me talk about this before I forget. Of course, you have mourned your late wife. Nobody tells you how long you mourn. It's a painful one. You can mourn as long as you want to. But I beg you, heal from that pain. Guide your heart with God's word. The word of the Lord is what will encourage you during your trying times. And if you seek God, you will find him. If you seek him during your time of grief, asking the Holy Spirit to be your comforter. God I serve never fails. He will come through for you. He has given and he has taken. And he knows that there are others grieving. There are those mourning the departed. And you as a husband or as a wife, take your time. Mourn very, very well. When the Holy Spirit has stepped into that situation, you know when to stop. And you begin to glorify God. We all at some point in our lives has lost a loved one. Or better still, we lost a loved one. Death is something that is inevitable. Speaking to you, I've lost a loved one. And I took my time, I grieved. I grieved until the Holy Spirit helped me to overcome it. That, that doesn't mean once in a while I don't remember my late brother. I do. There are times I see somebody that looks like him and I say, oh, and I just remember him. And that is it. Now, this is for me and my brother. Bringing it into marriage. That is a widow or the widower. Know when to stop. You stopping doesn't mean the memories of your diseased loved one has wiped off, you know, your brain or something. No, there are times you just remember them. But this time, you're not remembering them in comparison to your present wife. Now you have to heal completely from that loss. And that is why I said earlier that nobody tells you when to stop. If you know you are not yet satisfied or better still, you have not healed from that loss please don't marry another wife be very much patient control your urge draw closer to god the more as a pastor or as a woman of god don't be in a hurry of what people will say 
Women of God that are widowers and women of God that are widows rush into another relationship. It's because they don't want to be called fornicator or adulterer. They don't, they don't want to attach a stigma like a name to them. And you see them a month or two, boom, another wife is by the corner or another husband, you know, they're moving. They are not yet healed. There is still a wound, a broken heart that is yet to be amended. That the Holy Spirit all by himself needs to, you know, bring about wholeness. And you see the, the, the young pastor rushes into another woman. The young woman of God gets another man. And boom, every little trigger. If it were to be my late husband, if it were to be my late wife, Unknowingly to them. Now these are statements that comes out of their mouth unknowingly. That is because there is still a wound. You are yet to heal from the pains. You are yet to be patient enough for the Holy Spirit to wipe off those things, those pains, to by himself heal the wound, heal the broken hearts. And now you're seeing a picture of your late wife in the present wife. And because of course these are two different persons different personalities they can never be the same a little thing triggers you and you begin to compare your wife to your late wife you begin to compare your husband to your late husband that is because you did not take time to heal you did not give the holy spirit quality time to heal that broken heart to make you whole again to the point that even when you remember your diseased wife you just smile at it you crack it as a joke to your present wife that, oh, my late wife used to be this and that. And you people just laugh over it. And this also applies to you that is yet to get married. Not just to the pastor or the woman of God. I know why I had to say this so that it doesn't escape my memory. Now I'm back to why we are here. You lady, you gentleman, before you step into that relationship, before you say, yes, I would marry you, please heal. Please heal. So many marriages are shattered today. So many marriages are going through pains because the other party is yet to heal. Give yourself time. Society will not be there to solve problems for you in your marriage. You need to heal completely. You need to be better again. You need to feel very comfortable with your, with your spouse talking about the past without having pains and grief. You need to stop that comparison. You need to get to the state of never comparing your husband to your ex that has broken your heart. No matter how your, your husband has offended you, no matter how your wife has offended you, you need to get to the level of healing where you don't just compare. To be healed totally to the level where you never compare. Comparison never becomes an option. Out of God, heal from your past. Heal from the trauma. Heal from the pains your dad has caused you. Heal from the pains your mom has caused you. Some of you were raped by your dad. A few were molested by your house help. Child of God, heal. Don't step into that relationship with so much scar. And you healing is not the business of you and your spouse. It is the business of you and God. This is what ought to be done by you and God. As the Holy Spirit is working on you, you are trying your best to come off that trauma. Because if you don't, You'll be bleeding on your present spouse. If you don't heal from the pains of the loss of your late wife, your present wife will be bleeding. Your pains through your lack of understanding because you're seeing your late wife in your present wife. Because you're seeing your dad that molested you in your husband. Because you're seeing your ex broke your heart in your present husband. It is time to heal before you step into that marriage. Again, you have to heal to deal. You have to H-E-A-L to D-E-A-L. If you don't heal, you cannot deal. If you don't heal from those wrong words, you cannot deal with it. Now you were in an abusive relationship, a relationship where at every little argument, the man calls you a fool, the man calls you an idiot, the man calls you a low life, the man calls you worthless and all forms of names. Child of God, if you don't heal, from those words you cannot deal with them even in your present marriage you see your, you see yourself using the same words on your wife because you're yet to heal child of god you have to heal to deal 
Again, you have to drop those baggages or you multiply them. If you don't drop them before you step into the next relationship, you will always be on the defensive side because you did not drop it and you stepped into another relationship. You are always on the defensive side, always ready for war and it is multiplying. The pains are multiplying. So child of God, you have to heal or you multiply. Now, somebody is asking me, how does he multiply? Let me give you an illustration. If you have a dirt in your house, like a, 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 a baggage in your house that you are yet to dispose, when you leave it the first day, the second day, the third day, what happens? It begins to develop muko. So that is how the wounds that you have inside of you, that is how they are. Because you're yet to heal, what happens? It begins to develop muko. The more you allow that wound in your system, the more it gets rotten. That is why you need to heal before it develops into mucus. Some of you that did not get healed before you got married. What happens is, especially those that were once raped, if you are not healed before you step into that marriage, I have a deep feeling that somebody on that side of my voice is experiencing this. When your husband wants to touch you, you begin to scream. Because the, the, the rape trauma is still inside of you. You were molested by your father and because of that, you hate every man that comes across your way. Child of God, it is a constraint in your life. Please heal from all these things before you step into that marriage. I want you to also know that that person that has raped you is not necessarily God's enemy. Your enemy is not necessarily God's enemy. That person that has hurt you may have made peace with God. And remember, he's faithful and just to forgive. You are carrying that grudge. Killing your own self. That person has moved on and the Lord has forgiven. So please let go of that pain. It's okay to cry. It's okay to shed tears. It's okay to mourn for as long as you want to mourn. But please know when to stop. Some of you, the Holy Spirit is trying to help you, but you're not helping yourself. You want to carry that baggage into your next marriage. You'll be causing pains on that woman. You'll be causing pains on that man. Please let go. Heal from those pains. Stop overreacting. Can't you see you're overreacting? Overreaction is a sign of injury. Now let's do this little illustration. You have a cut on your hand. Ordinarily, you're not feeling the pain. But when you see me coming close to that hand, because you're conscious of that pain, you begin to shift your hand backward. I may not even know there's an injury there. I'm just walking past that hand. But because you know that there is a wound there, you are terrified because I am coming closer. That is how pain, that is how a wounded person reacts. You begin to overreact. A little word triggers you. That is because you are wounded. I beg you, ask the Holy Spirit to heal you from every wound you carry about today. Finally, before I round up, a wounded man will give birth to a wounded child. A wounded woman will give birth to a wounded child. A wounded man will give birth to a wounded son and daughter. A wounded woman will also give birth to a wounded son and more of a daughter. Because we are like mirrors to our children. I'm like a mirror to my daughters and my, and my husband is like a mirror to his son. They are both watching us. So, so I beg you in the name of God, heal from that wound. You cannot do it alone. I am a shoulder to cry on. You can call me. You can reach out to me on WhatsApp. We'll hold hands together and we'll pray. The Lord will heal you. Just ask and trust me. You will receive and you'll be made whole again before you step into that relationship. God bless you all. I love you. If you're yet, yet to subscribe, the time to do that is now. Again, click on the thumbs up and share this video. You have no idea whom you will be elevating. God bless you. If the Lord has also laid in your heart to become a partner here in TGN Ministries, can kindly click on the link in the comment section to become a partner. Loads of benefits and the Lord will keep increasing you all around in the name of Jesus. Stay glued. Click on the subscribe button. See you in my next video. Bye for now.